everyone, Comic Book Reviewer here, this time reviewing on Minions, The Rise of Gru. Now, as you know, Minions, The Rise of Gru is meant to be a sequel to the spin-off prequel film Minions from 2015, and was meant to be the fifth film in the Despicable Me film franchise, and unlike the first film that covered how the Minions came to be, the second one is meant to cover how Gru actually pulled off his first real act of villainy, as well as sort of point out how the Minions and him tried to live together as a unit and a team. And the premise of the film is meant to follow in 1976, where we see how an 11-year-old Gru dreams of becoming a supervillain, and we do kind of see how him and the Minions work together like a team, a family and a unit, and we do kind of see how Gru gets an invite by the Vicious Six, which are a group of supervillains who are now led by Bell Bottom. And I think Bell's character works, like she's a bit more disco influence. It's clear that she's a bit more sort of gold and, amb and ambitious, and it's kind of clear that Gru dreams of becoming one of their members. But it's kind of clear that they don't really see him nothing more than just a kid. And we see him stealing a Chinese Zodiac medallion that basically has the power to turn anyone into the 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac. And this is kind of like where we see how Gru ends up getting kidnapped after the medallion gets stolen by him. And we do kind of see how one of the former leaders known as Wild Knuckles, holds him for ransom, and this is going to be the plot where the minions are going to journey out to rescue Gru, well, there's going to be some mishaps. I think the, I think what the premise of the story is saying, how that sometimes in life you are going to be an outcast, but there are going to be people who see your potential, because I think when you do have Bell Bottom and the other members of the Vicious Six, it was clear they just saw Gru nothing more than just a joke. But I think when you did see Wild Knuckles sort of getting to know Gru a bit more better, this is where we do see him offer him to become his friend, as well as his mentor. And you do kind of see how Wild Knuckles does kind of feel annoyed, upset, and hurt that Bell and his former members betrayed him. And I think it's kind of a relatable thing. Like... Imagine joining something only to realise that no one really respected you and you were treated like a box man. And I think, for the most part, I think having it take place in the 1970s does work. Because when you had things like Bruce Lee, also Chuck Norris, karate films and other things, it was kind of clear that, yeah, Asian culture was slowly coming into in into the Western world, showing that people were slowly coming to terms with it, and showing kind of these sort of chops, martial art kind of chop socky sort of films. And I think for the most part, I think the film does feel a little like it's trying to rush a lot of things together, but I think at the same time, it knows what it needs to be, because I think when you do have Gru with his teammates, it's clear that he does get annoyed with them, but does see them as his friends as well as his family. I think when you have Belle with her members of the Vicious Six, it's kind of clear that, yeah, she's basically a bit more gold and ambitious, but kind of doesn't realise that being part of a team is treating your team with respect as well as being a unit. And you can kind of tell while Knuckles knows this and is annoyed that Belle and the others betrayed him. And I think, for the most part, it does kind of show characters where they're supposed to be, because when you do have Vector's dad, it shows him still working at the bank. And when you do have Ram's bottom, it's obviously going to foreshadow Despicable Me 2, where you basically do see him sort of warning Gru to stay out of trouble, which is obviously going to foreshadow Despicable Me 2. And I think, well, yeah, it's not a perfect movie, it does kind of answer questions to how Gru was kind of able to become a supervillain and actually pulling off his first successful heist, other than the crown 
by Skull and Overkill, and showing how Gru would slowly become become sort of this next big villain, and seeing how Wild Knuckles did see his potential. I think while it's not a perfect sequel to the prequel of Minions, it still knows where it needs to be. So I think this film definitely deserves a uh, thumbs in the middle. Well, it's not a perfect sequel, it definitely knew what it was trying to be, and I can kind of see where people criticise the plot a bit, but I think it's still enjoyable. So, comment review it here, signing out.